Hey guys, how's it going? In this video I'm going to show you how to set up a timer on your microcontroller. I'll describe the required registers, how to use them, and show you a code example to demonstrate the timer in operation. Let's get on. We have learned from the previous tutorial that each peripheral used has to have its clock enabled using the AHB and APB enabled registers. This also applies to timers. Each STM microcontroller has multiple timers that can be used. In this tutorial, we are interested in general purpose timers and since I'm using the STM32 L432KC, I have three at my disposal, so I'm going to go with timer two. The APB1 peripheral clock enable register one contains the enable bit for the timer two clock. The input frequency to the timer will be four megahertz for my microcontroller. The reason for this is that the system uses the MSI clock after it has been reset. This clock is fed to the APB1 domain in which timer2 resides. It is possible to modify the input frequency, but it's out of the scope of this tutorial. The counter register holds the elapsed time in terms of clock ticks. This register can store a count value of up to 32 bits in size. When the timer is enabled, it will by default increment this register to the desired goal count and will automatically reset when the goal count is reached. The desired goal count is stored in the auto reload register which can have a value of up to 32 bits written into it. Care must be taken as the counter will be blocked if a value of zero is written into the register. The prescaler register can be used to divide down the counter frequency. The frequency of the counter is equal to the input frequency of the actual timer itself divided by the value in this register plus one. The control register one contains more bits that can be used to control the function of the timer. In this tutorial, we are only interested in bit zero, which enables the counter. In the current configuration, the timer will automatically reset and start counting again once it reaches the goal count, therefore there is no need to do it manually. So the counter frequency is equal to the timer input frequency divided by the value in the prescaler register plus one. To calculate the timer delay for my blinky example, I simply divide the auto reload register that holds the goal count by the counter frequency. Let's say that I want a timer delay of one second. Knowing that my timer input frequency is four megahertz and choosing a prescaler of zero, I can calculate the value that I need to write into the auto reload register to achieve a delay of one second. With the aforementioned values plugged into the equation, this value comes out to be four million. Another thing worth pointing out is that the counter frequency can be used to modify the maximum time that can be measured. A higher maximum time can be achieved by lowering the counter frequency at the expense of the timer's resolution. Conversely, if the counter frequency is increased, the maximum time that can be measured decreases, but the resolution of the timer is improved, making it possible to measure smaller time intervals. Moving on to the code, I start with enabling the timer by setting bit 1 of the clock enable register. I then write a value of 0 into the prescaler and a value of 4 million into the auto reload register. These values give me a delay of one second as shown in the example. Next, I write a zero into the counter register to reset it and finally enable the timer by setting bit zero of the timer control register. So now that the timer has been configured, let's make a use of it by blinking the onboard LED. I've written the toggle LED function, which inverts the state of the LED every time it's called and then calls the delay one second function. The toggle LED function has been placed in a while loop to be called perpetually. The delay function is slightly more complicated, and just to note, this is not the best way to utilize timers. There are better ways such as using them with interrupts, which I'm going to cover, but for a simple blinky, this is fine. So what I'm doing is looping around and accumulating the number of ticks until the accumulated number reaches the goal count. This way I know that one second has passed and I can terminate the loop. How this is done is I initially read the counter register before entering the loop so that I know where the counter is at. I then enter the loop, which continues while the counter is less than the goal count. I read the counter register in the loop again to get the current value of the count. The previous count value is then subtracted from the current count to get the amount of time elapsed in terms of clock ticks. The elapsed time is then added to the counter to accumulate the total time elapsed. The previous value is then overwritten by the current value of the counter for the next iteration of the loop. Eventually, enough time will pass for the counter to reach or exceed the goal count. If I now compile and download the program onto the board, the LED starts to change state. Probing the LED pin with a oscilloscope shows that the LED changes state approximately every one second as expected. Anyway, this is it for this video. 
If you found this tutorial helpful, give it a like and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.